Welcome to Burn City Suns Talk, and this is our preseason series where we're previewing the season for the Phoenix Suns, and this is part three of that series. I'm Damian Adams here with Brendan Mao, and today we're going to get into so many things that go into the season and how the season will be successful or not successful for the Phoenix Suns. What are some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, Brendan? Yeah, so today we're going to predict what our what our thoughts are on the Phoenix Suns rotation and to I don't know. You you guys will get to see. Um, there's some really pressing questions with this rotation. Um, obviously, we saw the reports this morning that Bradley Beal is unlikely to play. Um, Shams reported that. So we'll see if he actually plays. But this this will reflect the whole season in general. It won't reflect that. Um, so some of the biggest questions are who's going to be the Suns' fifth starter, um, which we touched on in our last video between Josh Akogi and Grayson Allen. So you can go to our last video and see that. That was what we did in part two. Um, so we'll just touch on that a little bit in this episode. And then who's going to start at point guard? So you have Bradley Beal, who was rumored to be the starter going into the preseason, um, all off season. So, but it's kind of seemed like Devin Booker show that he is more comfortable with the playmaking role. So, we're going to debate debate that, and if it really matters, does it matter who their point guard is? Um, and then how much, which forwards will play? I mean, they have a, a plethora of forwards from Kevin Durant to Chemezi Metu to Nasir Little. I mean, you can just name so many forwards on the roster, um, which you see right here. Um, so, it, like, the, the forward question comes into play the most because – of how many guys are they going to actually play because all these forwards on this roster are very similar in how they play. Um, so it's going to really depend on how they mesh in with the Suns' biggest stars. Um, and then just going from that, how many of the big three are going to be on the floor at a time? Um, so you know that we have Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant, but do they want to stagger it so that it's always two of them on the floor at a time or just one of them on the floor at some time? So – that's going to be an interesting question, and it's really going to determine who plays around them the best. That's that's the guys that are going to get minutes the most is who can play well with those three. Um, and then, obviously, these, these are rotation questions for every team is how many players are going to get minutes. Will it be 10? Will it be 12? Will it be 11? And then how will the minutes be distributed? Um, that's another question that every team has to answer, so – Will some guys play more than you think? Will some guys play less than you think? We'll see um, when the Suns go on the floor tonight, but we'll predict that here. And then is the rotation going to be fluid? That just means is is it going to change, vary from game to game, or is it going to be pretty consistent in what they do? So just getting right into it, Damian, what, what, do you th what are your thoughts on the Suns rotation? Uh, for my thoughts on the Suns rotation, I think that it is a deep rotation. It's going to be deeper than most teams. A lot of teams might go nine or ten deep during the regular season. I think this team has the ability to go 11 or 12 deep during the regular season because of the players they have. You see my rotation here. So I have the starters, Devin Booker, Bradley Bill, Kobe, Durant, and Nurkic. But for my sixth man, I have a tie between Gordon and Grayson Allen. I think they'll have a very similar amount of minutes. And a lot of times I think they'll come into the game together. Um, in the first preseason game, Eric Gordon and Grayson Allen came as the first subs for Bradley Bill and Kogi. I think that's something that you may see during the regular season, of course, when Bill plays. Uh, now, tonight, if Bill is out, you could see Allen into the starting lineup alongside of Kogi and Gordon still come off the bench. But I think their minutes will be very similar. I got Eubanks right after that. I think he'll have a lot more minutes than people think he will have because of his versatility on the defensive end. And he'll close off some games because of that, because of certain matchups. Nurkic is not going to have the foot speed and also just the athletic ability to stay with those lineups. Um, at nine, I have Yuta. I think his shooting ability is something that you have to have in the game at certain times, so he'll get a good amount of time during the season. And Chemezi Metu, I think that in the preseason and training camp, he really earned a spot on this rotation and will get a lot of minutes. Um, Gordon and Little won't get that many minutes, but they'll be there in just spot sections, maybe to end quarters and in halves. Yeah, so – um, yeah, my rotation is pretty similar to Damien's. Um, I'll show that here in a second, but um, just going some things from yours is 
you had you had Devin Booker at the one and Bradley Beal at the two. Is that something that that you think they're Devin Booker's gonna be the main point guard, or is that just you think both of them are just gonna share the backcourt together? I think they're gonna share it, but I do think Devin Booker will take on the responsibility of being the playmaker more often than Bradley Beal. Um, Booker has shown in the past that he can do that. Uh, he's somebody who has averaged over six and a half assists per game in the season. I think that he can take that next step in his career. And I also think he's going to play the most minutes. Uh, I think that because he is only 27 years old, entering his prime, you know, Bill isn't old by any means, but he's already dealing with back issues. Kevin Durant, we know, is 35. So I think out of the big three, he'll play the most minutes. He'll be the one that's in the game with the most um, – the most different lineups with the, the biggest combination of different lineups. He'll be in the game for those. So I have Booker at one because of his point guard ability and also the fact that he'll play the most minutes in my opinion. Yeah. And that, that's an interesting stat. I mean, look at the preseason stats here. Um, I just think that Booker showed more of a playmaking ability. I mean, Bradley Beal had that one really highlight play um, where he made that nice pass to Chemezi Metu for the dunk after crossing up like three guys. So that was the one highlight that Beal had on from a playmaking standpoint. But in my opinion, I agree with you on this. Like Booker is, he knows Phoenix like so well, even though it's a new system, this is still his team as Bradley Beal himself said. So you want Booker at least to start the season to handle the ball more. Um, even though it was reported that Beal would be the point guard. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case because Booker is just – he'll get everyone in rhythm. And then when he when he gets in a rhythm, everyone else gets in a rhythm. So it really – they play through him if you watch them in the preseason. Um, I mean, you know they have KD and Beal, but if you want the other guys to be successful, Booker is the one that really opens up the offense. Um, so here's my rotation prediction. So like I just said, I have Booker. I have the same, same starting five as Damian. Booker, Beal, Kogi, Kevin Durant, and Yusuf Nurkic. Um, like like I said, you can go watch our video from uh, Sunday on breaking down why we, I, me and Damian both thought that Josh Kogi would be the team's fifth starter. Um, and then on my bench, I have Eric Gordon and Grayson Allen. I think, like Damian said, they'll get a similar amount of minutes. But um, I think for now, the reason I have Gordon above Allen is not in this first game because I expect – Grayson Allen's going to start over Bradley Beal. Um, that just makes the most sense based on the preseason. I think Eric Gordon's always going to be their sixth man um, unless both Bradley Beal and Devin Booker are hurt. Um, I think Grayson Allen will come in for one or the other, depending who's healthy or not. And then, But the reason I have Eric Gordon up there is because I expect him to close out games with the Suns more than Grayson Allen because of his veteran ability and he knows what to do in those situations i mean you know that allen plays well alongside the big three because of his experience in milwaukee um but i expect gordon um just because of the scoring i mean the spacing that he provides the shooting ability i think he's going to close out games more for the suns um you know allen i mean he's he's a veteran now too but he doesn't have that same shooting ability that Gordon has, which I think will make Gordon a more lethal weapon. And I think it really – it could depend if, if Allen's having a really good game, but Kogi's having a really good game. I mean, even Yuta, someone – if he's having a really good game, I mean, I think all four of these guys could close out games for the Suns, but I see Eric Gordon being the most prime candidate there. Um, and then looking further on – uh, Drew Eubanks and then Yuta. Yuta, I have the, as the first forward off the bench. I think he's really shown that, um, that he can come in and just give them a huge boost offensively with how well he can shoot the basketball. And then Jordan Goodwin, I have him. You had him at 11, I think. Um, I have him at – I have these two flip-flops from what you had. And I think the reason for that, especially in games like today where Beal's not playing, is they need they need a playmaker on the floor. And Goodwin is the only one that is really like shown to be a good like point true point guard. Like he doesn't have any other position on this team that he could play. He wants he's gonna be the point guard when he's on the floor. So they need that in these type of games like tonight. Um and then Metu, he could also get some good run in, but um I just think 
when Katie's out, Yuta will get more of the minutes um, for him. I mean, maybe they play alongside, maybe Yuta is at the three, Metu's at the four, but um, and depending on Metu can also play five if they really need it. So that's why I have him up here too. If if Eubanks and Nurkic are in foul trouble, then I would suspect Metu would fill in that spot. And then just going further on, I have Nasir Little, Keita Bates D up, and Saban Lee on the fringe. Um, why I didn't give them no minutes is because I think that they could work themselves into this rotation. I think Nasir Little has shown that he's he can play well. Um, off the bench, but I, he hasn't shown me enough with the big three that he would get minutes right away, even though he played really well in the last preseason game. Um, but then I have Keita Bates Diop, who many thought would be the Sun's fifth starter, could still be. Um, I think he has a chance to earn minutes early on in the year if he can prove that he can play next to these guys. So I just think. Kata, he played a lot on the Spurs, so I don't see them like completely benching him. I could see him get in some spurts early on, but not not be a regular part of the rotation. And then Saban Lee is just, even though he's a two-way guy, he's him and like Goodwin. He's he only plays point guard when he's on the floor. So if Goodwin gets in foul trouble, like we saw a lot in the in the preseason, then I think Saban could come in for him there. And then I have no minutes for Yudoka, Azubuki, and Bull Bull. So. Okay. Now, looking at your rotation, uh, and you mentioned how if Nurkic and Eubanks, you know, maybe get in foul trouble, you know, what goes on at the five? Would you be surprised to see Kevin Durant play minutes at the five? Um, I think it really depends on the matchup because you don't want him going against the dominant center at the five, but like I, like I said, I think Metu is a better fit for that small ball five. And Vogel's talked about both being fits at that small ball five, but I think his defense down low, Metu's his strength and ability to guard the post, um, give him that edge over KD for in terms of the small ball five. But um, if there's like, if Eubanks and Nurkic are somehow both in foul trouble or one is injured, um, I could see. I would see Azubuki. He maybe he could fill in there, but um, just because of his ability to defend down low, and I think that's the problem that they run into with Bobo is he doesn't he hasn't really shown that he can bang with bigs. I mean, he's played more on the perimeter, uh, which I don't know if that suits him well. But I think that's that's where the problem comes in with Bobo and, and what minutes he gets because he's been more of a forward for this team. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on Bull Bull. We've talked about it, how I just don't see where he fits in the rotation. Um, hopefully, you know, he's able to show the potential that we've all said that he has. He just hasn't lived up to it. And I didn't see the confidence in the preseason. I also didn't see the confidence in him from Frank Vogel with the limited amount of minutes he played. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then just looking back at the preseason, these are some of the stat leaders. Um I wrote an article on it yesterday, but Drew Eubanks led the entire NBA in plus minus. Um, so I think that that's a really telling stat of just how good their bench was this preseason. And you have to award guys for, I mean, preseason doesn't matter that much, but when the guys are fighting for rotation spots, um, like they were, are on the Suns because of how much depth they have, you have to reward like good one getting 2.7 steals per game in I mean, you know Eubanks will be the backup center, but him leading in blocks and rebounds. And then Saban Lee was really good in the minutes he played. So that's that's another reason why I think Saban might get in the rotation, um, just because Vogel spoke highly of him and his defensive ability and playmaking ability are very similar to Jordan Goodwin's. And Goodwin has not shown that he can stay out of foul trouble. So. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you on that one. Uh, Jordan Goodwin hopefully is able to play tough defense without fouling. That's going to be the big thing with him. You know, we talked about how he had four steals, but also four fouls in, you know, in a very quick amount of time in one of those preseason games. So he that definitely has to come into the game and provide that energy that he is known for. Is that something that is needed off the bench? You need those guys who energize you and just have you running up and down the floor and just 
bring a different style to the game for you, change of pace. So I think Jordan Goodwin is good for that. But like you say, he definitely has to be able to defend while being aggressive without fouling. Yeah, and then um, just going back to one of my questions that I had at the beginning of this, um, how do you see them mixing up minutes with the big three? Like, do you see Beal? I think in the preseason it's been – I mean, we didn't see Beal that much, but like Beal and Booker played the whole first quarter, and then KD comes in. KD comes out at like the six-minute mark of the first quarter, and he, and he plays the whole entire second quarter, and then you f- finish the the second quarter with those three guys when Booker and Beal come back in. Is that something that you think that they'll continue, or they should change it up a little bit? I think they'll continue it in a similar way to that, where they make sure that at least one of those three guys is always in the game, if not two of those three guys is always in the game. And of course, you want to finish out the halves in the game with those three in the game, of course. Uh, So I think Devin Booker should be the one who, like I mentioned earlier, plays the most minutes. So I can see him playing between 33 and 37 minutes a game. You want to try to uh, give the the load off of KD a bit because of his injury history and him being older. Uh, last year, I know with the last couple of years of Brooklyn, he played a lot of minutes where it was like, why is he playing this many minutes? But they also weren't as deep as his son's team. So I would love to see KD play around 30 minutes a game. Bradley Bill be between 30 and 35 minutes. I think Kogi's going to play a lot of minutes. I think he's going to be somebody that's going to be up there. He may even lead the team in minutes because of his defensive versatility. And the fact that you can put him out there with any lineup, he's going to be a heavy minute guy. Uh, Eric Gordon and Grayson Allen, I can see between 20 and 25 minutes off the bench. Uh, Eubank said the 20 minute mark as well. And then from there, it will trickle on down. Um, but Devin Booker should be the guy who leads the team in minutes along with a Kogi being up there because of his defensive versatility. And then, of course, Kevin Durant and Bradley Bill will be up there in minutes, but you don't want them as high as the others because of the injury history. Yeah, I disagree with you about Kogi a little bit just because of how similar him and Grayson Allen could play. They play to each other. I think that they'll – I mean, not this first game because of Beal being out, so you need one or the other on the floor at all times, and I think they'll do well together. But um, I just think that Kogi is very replaceable on this team um, just because of all the depth that they have. So I don't see him – I mean, unless he's having, like, a really good defensive game or offensive game for that matter, I don't see him, like – I see him as, like, the fewest minutes out of the whole starting five. Okay, I can see why you're saying that, but the reason I disagree is that he's going to be the guy who has the hardest defensive assignment. And normally the guy who has the hardest defensive assignment has to be out there to guard that person, right? So if he's guarding tonight, let's say his assignment is Steph Curry. If he's guarding Steph Curry, you know Steph Curry's going to be out there for 35 minutes. So if you want a Kogi out there to be a bother and to be a pest for Steph Curry, you got to have him play a similar amount of minutes. Uh, so I think because of that, he'll play a lot of minutes because of his defensive versatility. Yeah, and, yeah, I, I just – yeah, him, Grayson Allen, and Jordan Goodwin, I think all have – capability of guarding that number one option um it'll just be tough when he when we get to forwards who they put out there um because you know Vogel talked about it yesterday he likes Akogi's ability to defend one through four which I think Grayson Allen can really only defend like one through three and good one two probably um so that'll be interesting when they when they face those forwards if Yuta gets more minutes in those situations but yeah, I just think Grayson Allen and Jordan Goodwin can guard like Steph Curry tonight. I think you can't have a Kogi like gassed. I think that's that's really what's going to help them this year. I think is the defensive versatility that they have of putting different guys out there to guard the best player and still not seeing any drop off from it. So that's just my opinion with with a Kogi there. No, we'll definitely see tonight. Tonight will be a a good look into what Frank Vogel's thinking as far as the rotation and how he wants to approach defending guys like Steph. And then uh, then on Thursday to get the Lakers, how do you defend guys like LeBron? You know, who do you have on those guys? So it's going to be this first week is definitely like being thrown into the deep end of the pool for the Suns. Yeah, for sure. Um, So, I mean, is there anything else that you want to go through in terms of the rotation? 
Uh, no, not right now. I think we'll be able to really break it down a lot more after the first couple of games and see, you know, where they're going. And of course, like you mentioned earlier, it'll be fluid. It'll be something that will change throughout the year. We might even get a change in the starting lineup or a change in who the sixth man is coming off the bench as the year goes along. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, so I'll just re-show our rotations again. Um, so here was Damian's choice for what his rotation is. So let us know in the comments if you agree with Damien or what you would change, uh, how you think the Suns would do it. Um, and then here was my rotation. I had one less guy than Damien, and then I had more guys with um, capability of getting minutes. So those are how our rotation is compared. So let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with what we have there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just looking forward to game one. I mean, it sucks that Bradley Beal likely won't play, but we'll see. Um, I think there's reports yeah, we still now that – We've got to hope on Devin Booker too. Yeah, well, there's reports now that Devin Booker will probably play. So hopefully that's the case. Um, but me and Damien will have you covered um, all game long. I don't. Are we going to do a preview show or just a recap tonight? Uh, we'll just do a post-game show tonight, and then we'll definitely do – for the podcast, we'll have a full preview of the Lakers game for Thursday. Yeah, so we'll do a recap tonight of the Warriors game afterwards. I mean, this is kind of a preview, but, I mean, this is more of a season preview. Um, but, yeah, so tomorrow we're going to be going live for Burn City Sunstock podcast episode four. Um, so that will be, I think, around 530 tomorrow. So be sure to stay tuned to our YouTube channel um, for that. And we're very, we're just looking forward to getting the NBA season underway and seeing all that the Suns bring to the table this year. For sure, man. We are, what, five hours away from the season starting? I am super hype. Cannot wait. Because even the first game, we get to preview and get like a little scouting report on the Lakers uh, as they go against the Nuggets in that first one. So I'm definitely going to be locked into both games. And like he said, make sure you tune in for our recap after the Warriors game and our podcast tomorrow, Burn City Suns Talk on the Burn City Sports YouTube channel. And Burn City Sports is more than just the Suns. It's the Cardinals, the Suns, the Diamondbacks, Phoenix Rising, everything Arizona State, Phoenix Mercury, anything Phoenix Sports, Burn City has you covered. So make sure you follow Burn City Sports on all social media platforms and check out the website, burncitysports.com, because we have a talented team of writers that have you covered on everything Phoenix sports and sometimes outside of Phoenix sports. So we'll have you covered on all things. If you need that sports content in your life, go ahead and check it out. And until next time, peace.